Today we're going to resolve the antenna issue on the iFlight DC5. The iFlight DC5 is an amazing frame, except that it's quite heavy and has a terrible antenna placement. So as you can see, the antenna come out the back and require a SMA extension to connect them to your air unit. And being so far at the back here and being in this kind of position makes them susceptible to damage and crashes along with being blocked by, by the quad. So as you turn the quad towards you and you're coming back towards you, the battery here ends up blocking both antennas. So you end up having very poor reception. So what I had done initially was I ended up having the antenna come out the side here so that they clear the battery and give better reception. But what ends up happening though is because they're unsupported, so you do get some resonance, you get some resonance, along with they are susceptible to prop strikes. So what we're gonna to do today is try to resolve this once and for all with a permanent solution. We're going to use the TrueRC Singularity 5.8 um, antenna. So this is the LHCP and the long. So you can see fairly long uh, cable there. We're also going to make use of some parts from our Rotorite HD1 kit. And this is what we're going to be using. We're going to make use of the antenna holder from the DC5 kit, along with just some regular uh, 35 millimeter by 5 millimeter standoffs. I tried to get uh, black, but all the store had was, was red. So we'll make it work. All right guys, so you may be wondering why we have these antenna directly soldered to our air unit. So a while back when I first started getting into FPV, I used to crash a lot. Not to say I don't crash a lot right now as well, but I ended up uh, breaking one of the MMCX connectors. So I decided to get in there and see how I could repair it myself. And that's why you, you see both of my stock antenna here were soldered directly to the board. It wasn't uh, too difficult, but what I've noticed after doing the first uh, True RC antenna is that the True RC antenna does not have individual strands of uh, cable for the outer shell. Uh, what it's actually got is a completely metal shell, which is also the, the ground portion. And of course, it's got the um, other cable in the center. So a little bit more difficult to directly solder, but as you can see here, um, came out fairly nicely. If we look at the original antenna, we see that it's actually got individual strands that you have to braid together. And when you braid these individual strands together, that's where you're able to get that strength. So here we've actually created ourselves a little bit of a solder bridge to hold it. And you can see very, very tight. 
This is not going anywhere. I've actually been running it like this with the original antenna for maybe six, six, seven months now, and it's been working really great. And you can see this one I haven't touched yet and still quite strong. All right, let's get back to it. All right, so we just finished soldering up the first uh, connection here, but you know, if I was five minutes wiser, I would have realized I have to pass the antenna through the mount first, because now I have no way of getting this, this guy back in here. All right, so we're gonna have to remove this and then do it all over again. All right, so it looks like we hit um, a major malfunction with Project Frankenstein here. You know how they say measure twice, cut once? Well, I measured twice, but I measured the wrong thing both times. So it looks like what happened was our antenna that we purchased from TrueRC was actually too short. So the specs said 120 millimeters, but that was including the actual antenna itself plus the connector. And because we removed the connector, well, it became too short and we couldn't properly install our HD1 antenna mount. In the meantime, we're gonna note out to TrueRC to see if we can order this antenna with a custom length of cable. However, what we decided to do was to get the squad back together so at least we can see how the new positioning of the antenna along with these new antenna perform. As you can see, the antenna is connected directly into the air unit. It's been soldered in and it's been zip tied in this optimal V shape. And because this antenna uses the 
RG405 cable, which is you know, very, very rigid. It actually holds this shape uh, fairly well. So we're gonna try this out. And then once we get our new antenna with a custom length from TrueRC, we'll create a part two where we will really see Franken DC5 come to life. So we even tried disassembling the original DJI antenna to see if we can replace the cable to move the project along. Unfortunately, after disassembly, it looks like they have actually sealed the antenna unit. So it's a piece of plastic with some antenna uh, traces on it. The bottom here, they've actually sealed with, um, looks like maybe some sort of epoxy. So this is a section where we used to drop down to the zero bars or even the one bar. And I suspected it was a firmware glitch, but maybe it was an antenna problem. Because here with the true RC antenna, we got three or even four bars and that's fairly low to the ground. And I'm going you know, fairly far away as well, a lot further than I did previously. I still have 34 milliseconds, 50.8. Yep, still three bars. Four bars, three bars. So yeah, we're, we're right up to the tree line now. We're almost at the end of the property here and still have three bars. And that's fairly low to the ground. So as you can see, I'm not having a clear line of sight anymore. 50.8, 44 milliseconds. Yeah, okay, we're down to two bars, but most momentarily. Back up to three, two, three, four, three. Yeah, these, these antenna are, are amazing now. It may be a combination of the antennas themselves along with the new positioning, but yeah, I've never been able to come this far here because we don't have the line of sight anymore. We're actually quite a bit lower than where I'm flying from. And you can see, oh, momentarily 52 milliseconds. Yeah, so we just did almost the whole um, perimeter of the property. If it down to two bars, oop, 10, 10 megabits. Yeah, so quite a bit of a dip over here. So we did drop a little bit, but again, I've never actually come all the way here previously. So you can kind of see how far away we are. And you can see that there are some uh, rolling hills here. So we were actually covered by the hill at that point, but still not, not too bad. With the prior setup, I was actually hitting, you know, three bars even over here. So I, I'm very happy with that. So